Welcome back. Uh, today we're going to be fixing yet another sufficient material or sufficient mating material bug. So this was discovered on Leechus. There's opposite color bishops and um, here like we got a bishop versus a queen and like so white had their time expire and uh, black was not credited the win as black should have been um so yes white is capable of winning this but theoretically speaking um uh black should have been credited a win because uh white is capable of losing this and that win credit didn't happen but uh black is fully capable of checkmating from the position where the game ended so uh, this was discovered and reported about a week ago. I have spent some number of hours trying to fix it. And I've just been finding one more thing and one more thing and one more thing and one more thing. But we'll get there. So this is the initial report. Um, here's all of my patches that I put together. Um, Let's see, where can I go to find all my commits in one nice organized place? I think pull requests is unfortunately the best place I can find this. So I did a number of force pushes and commits and rebasing and whatever. Um, but here's where I ended up so far. And we've got all these beautiful Scala expressions. Uh, ultimately, I end up changing both our source files, and I think I augmented the test file first, saying we want to... Um, well, I cleaned up some extra characters we had in our test script that were printing out um, things that didn't need to be printed, that were just in, uh, initially put there for debugging purposes. Just so thing, more information would be logged to the console, I removed that logging that didn't need to be there. Um, augmented these tests, added some more bishops into them, and added the test that was observed in production where um, if the opponent has a queen and you have a bishop, you should be credit a win if uh, the opponent also has a bishop or has a piece that's capable of promoting to a bishop, or has a knight. So, um, rather than trying to look at this diff of this cluster of everything that I changed, let's, and that's a lot of changes, I deleted 57 lines of code and added 42, which really just means I edited some number of lines of code and moved some things around, but that counts as deleting 57 and adding 42. That's how you measure a diff. Um, let's take a look at the rules themselves. And does my shell carry over from what I was previously looking at? And furthermore, can I show off the other cool feature, the thing I've been wanting to try out on stream here, which is the terminal multiplexer Tmux. Um, so I'm trying to remember, is it like control B quote? Yeah, there we go. This is beautiful. So I'm able to split screen my terminal in order to code while uh, testing. So the, to be or not to be, that is the question. Uh, so I can start that up. And meanwhile, um, let's see. How do I escape? No. There's a way to switch between the multiplexed shells, and I'm forgetting how to do it. Uh, what's my tmux cheat sheet? There's a way for me to switch from the bottom shell to the top shell. I've uh, control B and then O means next pane. We can try that. Control B O. <laughs> Not exactly what I was thinking of. Is there no way that I can like switch focus into the top shell? I mean. I guess that works. It just feels weird, but... Uh, well, no, the reason I want to have the top one on top is so that I can be typing, and you can see all the characters I'm typing and not get the last line cut off. 
am I really going to have to make my own um, version of this layout that like rearranges things just for the stream purposes? Or is there a way I can switch my carrot back into the top shell? I, get, I mean, I could do a horizontal split, which would look pretty funky. Um, I might have enough real estate for that to make sense, but that seems kind of weird. Uh, show pain numbers, kill pain, break pain into window, restore pain from window, toggle between layouts. Oh, wait, space is toggle between layouts. Uh, well, okay, furthermore, this just, like, crapped out. Um, so I want to leave that running. Yeah, uh, whatever. Whatever. We'll figure this out some other time. Probably you guys all know this better than I do, but... Yeah, I could switch the panes to make the top one on bottom and all that, but that's not something I'm going to be able to easily figure out in real time. So, what I was going to do is say, let's start by looking at... Um, I mean, yeah, I have the test class. That's kind of exciting. It's not a very easy read. Um, it took me quite a few attempts to get some of this stuff right. You would not believe it. Um, oh yeah, and I was searching the Leech-Us code base trying to figure out where are the insufficient mating material things done. Um, okay, fine. Um, so vim source main scala insufficient mating material. This significantly changed, got a lot simpler. Um, so there's two concepts here. One is that um, in some positions uh, it's not possible for either player to win and we are able to detect that some of the time and to the extent we can let's detect it. Um, so if a board position is an automatic draw due to neither player being able to mate the other as informed by the traditional chess rules to the best of our knowledge, um, that's just declared as a dead position. Um, so our way of checking for that is, uh, okay, we have uh, an expression here, bishops only, and bishops only here refers to uh, my opponent has a king and one or more, or zero or more bishops, and nothing else. And likewise, I have a king and zero or more bishops. Uh, minors only extends that uh, to include knights as well. So if the position consists only of kings, knights, and bishops, and there are three or four fewer pieces, or uh, if there are only bishops in the position and all the bishops are on the same color complex then it's not possible for either player to checkmate the other so that's the rationale between or behind this rule hey welcome eat chips how's it going so yeah this is the rule for uh, dead position detection to the best of our ability People have had suggestions dozens of times in our forum for, well, what about this position? Well, what about that position? And almost all of them have to do with a formation of pawns that are blocking the center of the board, and one king being stuck on one side of the formation, and the other king being stuck on the other side. And that is a much harder problem to solve than this is right here. And it has not, I mean, I think once it almost occurred in a game on Lee Chess which is pretty exciting. Um, why does this issue always flare up on Lee Chess? You'll have to get more specific, unfortunately. Um, the reality is that this code was like super complex and bloated as I was trying to make a function work both for atomic and horde chess as well as the standard chess rules. And I kept tweaking things and augmenting the unit tests over and over and learning Scala at the same time, which was pretty exciting. But um, the net result was that the code was unreadable. Um, so with the most recent test that we added based on the most recent position, um, that 
forced me to rewrite some parts of the code and exposed other use cases. And I've been pulling a thread here and I've now deleted 57 lines of code, basically rewriting a very large part of this. All the tests are still intact. Um, I added some new tests. Uh, the new test, or I'm sorry, the new test here is intact. I've added some more bishops into the existing tests. So I keep augmenting this stuff and building upon our knowledge base. Um, but yeah, why has this happened so often? Um, let's see, I think what's well, been, what, twice for standard chess in the last 18 months or something. Maybe even longer than that. Um, an issue has been reported with this. Um, or a bug has been reported. And that's my bad, um, because my tests were not complete. Uh, I did the best I could, but also I was learning Scala and uh, also trying to uh, preserve what was already there instead of reforming this with lots of, I don't know, flexibility to change how these data structures worked. Uh, this function here, this apply, I think used to be about 20 lines of code, and I've cut it down to three plus a blank line in between there. Or it feels like it was 20. It was extraordinarily complex. Um, this bishop's on opposite color, most of it had to do with the rules for atomic chess, which I had embedded into the same function. Um, now I've started unwinding all this and straightening it out, and it's becoming a lot simpler. Um, and I think it was like two weeks ago I had started on that journey. Uh, today I was tuning this for performance and trying to figure out what are all the performance shortcuts I can implement to imp um, so that we are able to detect dead positions as well as evaluate timeout situations as quickly and efficiently as possible. Um, I think I've done quite a few improvements here. Now I'm using uh, these predicates as opposed to counting all the pieces or transforming the map that is the board into a list and then doing distinct operators on the list and then doing a count. Um, now we're just streaming or however Scala implements the predicate filtering. Um, so the minute this predicate is not satisfied um, or the minute this predicate's not satisfied, uh, this function can immediately return false and it's not necessary to allocate intermediate data structures. So, uh, that's good. Uh, most recently my attention was turned to this down here, which is the one player has timed out and figure out should a win be awarded or not. Um, Debo did help me rewrite the first part of this, which involved, um, I think three negation operators. Um, maybe more than three, I forget but uh, he helped me rewrite this to be a lot more sane for the first half of this. And I've taken the second half of this and made it so it's no longer bishops on same color negated, but now it's bishops on opposite colors. And now the definition of bishops on opposite colors also is, uh, instead of being like 10 lines of uh, including some checks for what are the pieces that are still on the board, this just goes in ahead and uh, checks the condition outright for just filtering. Just get the bishops out of the position and check if they're on the opposite colors. Don't check if there's like no knights and queens and rooks and other things. That can be done separately by whoever calls the function. Um, yeah. Leeches is pretty damn fast and I'm doing everything I can to speed it up. So. Um, actually, if a player times out, there's no need to immediately evaluate that because you're blocking, you're not going to allow additional moves at that point. But yeah, I think.
but I'm still doing what I can so that we're not creating all these intermediate data structures which didn't need to happen in the first place. So um, again, maybe the way that Scala or um, the ACA actor setter, however all this works, uh, ACA is actually not in the middle of the stack, so never mind that, but the way Scala interprets this might still do something not saying un underneath the surface or beneath the surface there. Hey, welcome. Awesome. Good to see you here. Holy moly, I've learned so much about Scala. <laughs> it's quite the adventure, but wow. I And so I'm trying to think of how to summarize what the heck happened here, but I definitely appreciate the help better understanding like some of the filtering stuff here um today i spent some time experimenting with where do i need like uh, i know scala allows you to put spaces between the function and the object you're calling it on and it's just taking some time experimenting with uh in some cases do i need to have um uh the scope operator the period and if I'm accessing a member variable, uh, at least that's the Java nomenclature, if I'm accessing a member of the board, in order to get that out of the board scope there, I still do need the dot operator, but for functions, um, that can be evaluated separately. Um, so, yeah. Okay, in doubt, do the A dot B and C style always. Yeah, I think I've been abiding by that in general. Uh, in doubt, when in doubt, I've been adding parentheses to help clarify things. Um, but no, that's a good point. And that seems to make sense with what I studied about compilers forever ago. Um, it's been at least 10 years since I studied that stuff, so. Uh, but it makes sense that in terms of trying to build the syntax tree, you'd probably want to separate it that way. Um, so what have I discovered? Oh my goodness. Um, I guess first let me get diff, uh, let's see. I want to diff this with the master branch, source slash test. Uh, so I got rid of these print and pass operators that we had logging some extra information for the atomic variant tests. That's no big deal. I threw in a bishop here in this auto draw test, uh, just added another bishop. So if all the bishops are on the same color square, that still counts as a draw, regardless of who's got how many bishops, that's still an automatic draw. Um, and another bishop in a similar situation. Um, having multiple bishops doesn't affect the evaluation of this stuff. Added the, this is what I first added, which was the defective position when we observed in production where, okay, this was the end of the game, uh, white timed out, and uh, black was awarded only a draw instead of a win. Okay. Now that's totally fair. Yeah, my naming um, is probably quite bad, and I need to be uh, clearer in how I name things. Uh, let's see. Um, let's see, let me refresh this. Unfortunately, my browser, well, this is the Chrome browser, so this should be up to date or whatever, but I should be able to review most recent, oh, I'm sorry, you reviewed that elsewhere. Well, that's fine. Yeah, I can go look at that. Uh, sorry about that. Um, no, it's good. Um, this is going to stand the test of time, so uh, I should uh, abide by the coding standards you've used elsewhere. Uh, so I need to fix my variable names and such. Um, let's see, what else is there? So I augmented the test. Um, yeah, you've looked at this code already, so I, there's nothing with much which I can impress you here about it, uh, since you've already looked at it. Um, uh, I was still, oh, and then there's this local Scala formatting change. Um, 
I didn't touch this, but the formatter did, the linter did. Um, I'm not intending to check that in or commit it because, uh, well, potentially somebody else might make that same change and then we'll have a merge conflict. So I'm not going to actually commit that. It's just something I can't get away, get around. But um, probably I can just take this other function, this atomic winning material, and just inline it here because it's only used in the one place. On the other hand, having this abstraction is not a bad thing, so I could probably leave it, but I'll take a look at your comments there. Yeah, I'm finally getting the Scala syntax down, and not only that, but the object orientation of where, how do you abstract these things, and how do predicates work, and finally starting to grasp um, that as well as how to do some proper commenting on it. Yeah. <laughs> yes yeah indeed yeah it was one hell of a learning curve uh, so I learned a bit today <laughs> um so yeah and then this like the fact that we don't have the java ternary operator um but i could still use this arguably that could be a separate function arguably all my variable names and such could be improved quite a bit but uh, there was at least a, in a point where I was understanding how the code worked, and so that was, I was quite happy about that. Um, there was, used to be a lot of code, and now it's becoming a lot leaner and easier to manage and uh, get a better understanding of how to get things out of the board map and um, whether or not we should, how the intermediate, like, maps that are converted to streams, to iterables, to and then collect it into lists and such and figure out how to cut out some of those abstractions. That was useful. Um, <laughs> yeah, if is an expression, so therefore it does return a value, so there's no need for... Yeah, right. Yeah, so Scala is all expression-driven. There's no need for procedural code. Um, in fact, <laughs> yeah. And I always found that to be quite a bit of black magic how you'd be able to chain some of the ways, uh, some of these side effects of futures and such, the way Leela does it. Uh, it's quite impressive that you can uh, chain a future and then have that result calling into another future and it all follows from how object orientation and callbacks and all that works but Scala is in this more functional mode where you're not declaring that I'm gonna call this and then I'm gonna call that in a procedural way it is all very function oriented so but yeah some of that how that works in Leela is pretty amazing and the way that Leela um further introduces that like what was that Leela pimped out class or whatever that defines the extra operators that are not part of the scala specification but are nice extensions to the language so that considerably impressed me um all right so i'm not going to expect any feedback here um but i'm going to look at my own comment that i left here which was oh crap i forgot about this position if a uh, king and queen time out against a king and multiple bishops. So that's what I need to test here. So let me first generate such a position. Not that I need to actually make the game or anything, but having the FEN for it could be useful. So if I've got a king and a queen, and my opponent's got multiple bishops, um, and then there's this, and then there's that. Uh, so the king and queen timeout. Uh, so this needs to count as a win. This needs to count as a draw. Um, we'll worry about this one first. Oh, yeah. 
Let's see. Object orientation in this case is irrelevant. It doesn't mean anything. It's about doing... Um, oh, I see. Yeah. That's interesting. That, that's good. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm By in this case, I meant in the case of Scala, as opposed to some other strange abstracted language that might be similar to this. Um, yeah. Right, you don't have like what Java has with uh, objects extending each other and that kind of insanity that came from C++ and still lingers today, even though the C++ authors aren't such big fans of it either. Um, okay, so I want to augment my test class first. Uh, so where did my test class go? Auto draw test. So I want to test, do I have anything with a queen versus a bishop or multiple bishops or anything like that already? Or do I, um, on opposite bishops uh, with queen? All right. Um, so this is the one I made where the bishops are on the same color square. Let's see, eight, eight, three, queen, four to bishop king four. Oh, I'm sorry, no, that's the production position. I didn't make that. Um, yeah, I'm gonna need to create a new one of these here. Do not detect insufficient material. So we've got bishops versus pawn. And here I wanna just take that pawn and make it into a queen and reconduct the same test. Oops, so. Yank 12 lines of code, paste it in. Um, bishops versus queen. Now my pawn was a capital P, here it is. Um, auto draw is false. Um, yeah, so that, I'm sorry, auto draw, if, if the bishops are on the same color square, should count as a draw, right? Let me open up a separate board editor. Here's my separate editor. I'm gonna grab this bishops versus queen, FVN. Drop it in here. All right. So this should count, uh, not as an automatic draw, but uh, this should be awarded as a draw um, if white times out. Whereas if I were to stick the bishop over here, this should count as a win. So that's the more interesting position of the two. Uh, so I'm going to take this and then make black's move f6, e5. And then white's going to... We're going to simulate what would happen if white were to lose on time in this position. So auto draw is false, situation end is false. Um, there are two more tests I want to add to this. Game dot board dot whatever the heck the function was in board. Unfortunately, I'm using Vim. Don't have like all the nice Emacs or whatever shortcuts um, uh, set up there. So I need to actually go out and grab the function name. Um, and I'm streaming on my Windows box, but uh, coding on my Linux terminal. So this is a bit cumbersome. Uh, <laughs> yeah, this is where I found the finisher thing. Uh, so um, let's see. So I got my code there. And let's just drop that in. So... I think variant is not a member of this, but board is there. Um, 
Melissa White must be, I forget. One of these should be true and the other should be false. But this is not something we're currently testing, um, but probably should consider adding. <laughs> oh, no, that's fine. It's good to have some discussion. I just didn't want to forget what I'd started on here. Um, sorry for kind of ignoring you here, but I think this is what I was thinking I was going to show on the stream. I think I got this built and insufficient winning material. Let me just look at how that's defined again. Um, so here it is. So this accepts a parameter color. Um, so insufficient winning material for white would be false because um, white has a queen. Um, but um, actually, yeah, this should be false for both players. Uh, the situation where I've got the bishops on both color squares, right? Did I have set that up right? Bishop, two squares, and then the other bishop. So those are on opposite color squares. Um, and then if I really want to go for the gold, we're going to add another position quite similar. Uh, but instead of bishop, two bishop, this is going to be one bishop, and then another empty square, and then a bishop. So that's going to be, wait, that's going to be this. And that should count as a draw for white. Um, um, so white does not have insufficient material. However, black has insufficient material. Um, so only white can win that. Oh, um, yeah, I have been able to move things into my buffer, but that raises a good point that I should be able to conveniently switch between files. Um, uh, yeah, I should learn more about that. That's a good point. Uh, status, all right. Now I know one thing they've been saying about, I haven't figured out how to do this and should be pretty simple and straightforward, but um, I think the notion is that, um, here, let me try to do what I tried to do earlier. So, oops, I'm already tmuxed. Um, right, so I should try to do that. And the notion is I should leave that up and running while I'm doing my coding. And that if I need to rerun the tests, it's already loaded the entire environment. Okay. Uh, it's already loaded both uh, Scala as well as the application. So I could start the test here. And then if I wanted to, I could uh, have a separate shell up here. Uh, Whoops. Um, okay, so that's up and running. I don't know exactly how to. Um, oh, I'm sorry. No, it's Control B O to switch between shells. Um, all right. So I want to work on auto draw test. Um, insufficient winning materials. Not a member of chess.board. Oh, maybe Variant is a member of... Of course it is. I don't know what I was thinking. Um, uh, let's see. Scala auto draw test. Uh, line 41. Uh, so yeah, game.variant should work here. I'm not sure what I was running into pre-stream that confused the heck out of me, but um, yeah, that expression should be equally valid in this project as it is in Leela. 
because uh, that uh, game class is defined inside this code. Uh, wait, control B O switch. Let me just redo the test there. I don't know of a way to like have it continuously test. That'd be kind of useful and nice. Um, all right, uh, I've got that uh, GitHub page up in uh, my the thing I'm viewing the chat from. Uh, oh, okay. So yeah, that's good. I've got test only within this scope. Uh, so I could do uh, tilde test only uh, chess.auto draw test. Now, of course, that's going to hit the same compilation error, but you know, once I've got past the compilation error. Oh, I'm sorry, the tilde keeps it going continuously. That is cool. Nice. That's what I was struggling with. All right. That's awesome. Um, now, variant is not a member of chess.game. So here we're getting game from the POS package? Question mark? Or it's under the same... No, we're getting this from chess.game. So we have the same packaging and we're... Okay. Um... <laughs> I'm trying to remember how I got this working before the stream. Maybe it was situation.board that I have visibility to here. Let's try that. Nope. Um, insufficient winning material. It's not a member of chess.board. Oh, I'm sorry, this is like board.variant or situation.variant or somehow I got visibility to this thing. Yeah, that's how we did it. You have to go through um, using some sort of different game. I don't even know what's different there. But this is what I got working before the stream and that should compile. All right, so tilde runs on file change, so there's com uh, compile, test, and test only. All right, so now, um, I can scroll up, or I could, uh, what happened here? What happened? So bishops versus queen, with what seems to be one space between the bishops. Um, so the value at line 151 of the test is false. All right, let's put that back up. Uh, whoops. Oh, I didn't mean to switch tabs like that, but okay, we'll leave it. I don't care. I don't know how I did that. Um, okay, so I, this is actually what I was trying to do originally, so this is cool, I guess. Because um, this way you can read all the code. Like, the last line of my terminal's cut off down there. At least it was before the last time I checked on something like this. So it was line 141 of auto draw test, where white lacks insufficient material um, let me think about that so oh, good god this this is the thing that's been killing me the whole time um so I need to figure out what this means again. So for white, white has a queen, so white does not have insufficient mating material. Um, 
Unless I missed something. I was expecting this clause here to fail because the rolls of color. I was expecting that to fail in the case where the bishops, black has two bishops and black, uh, and white's time expired. White's time expired, so we pass in, I think, black to check if black has insufficient material. The rolls of black should be bishop, comma, bishop. Black could potentially have up to 10 bishops in a standard chess game. Don't know why you would, but you could. So rather than writing um, so many match clauses for how many bishops black could have, we um, need to find a way to make this address that situation. But that it's not what failed. What failed, oh, this is on line 151, not 141 that failed. Um, so what was 151 again? Uh, this thing failed because uh, something succeeded, but uh, the value is false, where this needs to be true. I'm sorry, that is the thing I expected to fail then. That black, despite having two bishops, he has insufficient material because he underpromoted like a dimwit and he has two bishops on the same color complex. Or maybe there was some really strange situation where he actually had to underpromote to a bishop, but I seriously doubt it. All right. Uh, let's put those on. Yeah. I'm used to jumping the lines, but this will make things easier for everyone. Um, I've got the space for it. Let's do it. Um, I could even put that in my vimrc. Oh, yeah. Uh, so this is what I expected to happen. <sighs> now what's a good way to address it? Oh my goodness. Um. So. case that failed was black had two bishops that were on the same square color and yet I could add another case list bishop comma bishop and then I could add another one for three bishops and four bishops and all that stuff but that I'm kind of missing the point furthermore um, building this list this rolls of should not really be necessary I should be able to do this more predicate based form of thing that's um, that once, I mean, Scala could still optimize these things, not necessarily implement them exactly the way I've specified it. It could optimize these functions however it wants to, as long as it's functionally equivalent, but, um, I don't expect it to, uh, I'm not that optimistic. So all this special rules and stuff only really applies, um, for, um, let's see. Now this is color sensitive, so I need to figure out a way to, um, I mean, yeah, I could filter here, but what color of pieces do I want to filter out? I guess first I want to start with um, filtering, uh, let's see. Get this nice map. Uh, dot two is the piece, and I'm sorry. There's a way to get just the white pieces. I don't need to make my own filter. There's one already in here. Um, color. Oops. <laughs> well, I mean it'll compile. Actually, no, it doesn't, because. Um, yeah, that's why not. All right. Oh, do, is Scaliform going to move? Scaliform is not going to reformat my code live. Okay, fine. I can do it. I can format my code. That's okay. Um, yes. So this needs a better name. So other people can understand it. I mean, I could call this kings and miners only, but... Um, 
Oh. All right, so let me back up. Um, so I saved the file uh, like this, and then I could colon e whatever. Um, all right, I'm sorry. I've saved the file again, and now I could colon e to get the Scala format changes. There we go. Um, Um, so that's the concept, but really what we're checking for is not so much that, uh, well, yeah, I guess we are checking that we have kings and minor pieces only. Um, if this class were called like sufficient mating material, um, uh, Windows has turned on storage sense for me. I probably need to clean up some files at some point. Um, but yeah, if this were called sufficient mating material, then I would probably just make this function like, do I have a queen or do I have a rook? Instead of this, um, well, I don't know if it's easier one way or the other. Real, um, yeah, it'd be like board.pieces color exists, do I have a pawn or a queen or a rook? Uh, could call that like do I have heavy material or something but then all these special rules only really apply in these positions where I only have kings and minor pieces um, so um, kings and minors only now maybe I don't declare the variable well I'm sorry that's a really useful expression to have so let's keep that expression. Um, now, what am I going to tack onto this? So let's say that all I have is some combination of king and who knows how many minor pieces. Um, so next thing I need to check is... Um, <laughs> now where did I do the thing earlier where I like actually built a list out of the map? Um, yeah, here I have like bishops on opposite colors and here I actually did collect it into a list then did the whole distinct thing on it. That seems a bit overkill. Um, so kings and miners only... oh, wait. Um, so this is a map, okay, or it's a stream, I'm not sure. It's one of the two types, which is the same color, however many can only mate if the opposition has at least, uh, well, we'll get to that. All right, AFK. No queen or rook, don't, oh. Okay, I'll try to get through this and criticize or critique it in a bit. Um, all right, so how do I do this? Kings and minors only. Um, oh, I want to map this. Here's my mapping function. Um, Maybe like that. Uh, what I'm looking to get is the. Uh, so here we've got piece. Two is the piece, and I want its roll. And then I want a distinct list of the rolls. So I do this. Oh, I remember what I did earlier. Um, yeah, okay, so here's how we're going to do this. Uh, veil rolls, uh, by color. Uh, rolls by color is equal to this thing. Because I'm going to need that list of rolls in a sec. No, I'm not. 
I'm not actually introspecting that at any later point anymore. Uh, color. All right. By color. Now that's um, or of color. There's got to be a better way to name that, but I'm not sure what to do there. But yeah, I want to take this, collect it, and then having collected it, get the distinct roles out of it, and um, then uh, do the rest of what this is doing, uh, which is filter out uh, the king and then match that against um, this. And let's see. And then here, this is where it's using the rolls of the opposite color, which I should probably set up as a lazy value or something like that. Rolls of opponent color equals uh, board uh, rolls of not color. All right. Um, uh, rolls of opponent color. Same thing. Uh, at this moment, I should actually pull up the Slack and make sure I haven't missed um, anything too critical before I code too much. So one second while I check that. <sighs> okay. Some into optimization. Um, filter plus map equals collect. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, that's that's a very good point. Um, okay, secondly, reading the name of the functions tells me do the players have bishops that can't capture each other, but the implementation says both players have at least one bishop. Yeah, okay, so I need to fix um, my variable names to not be lying. Um, all right, um, the name of the function, bishops on opposite colors. Okay, I'll try to understand that in a bit. Um, but yeah, instead of doing the uh, map and then the, um, I'm sorry, filter and map is the same thing as collect. So where am I doing a filter and a map, I wonder? Um, oh. Wait. Am I misremembering the members of the board class? Um, then source main scala board. There's a way to get, oh, is it pieces of? Yeah, pieces of color. All right. So where am I doing a filter and then a collect, or a, a, a filter and a to list was it I, that I was doing? I'm trying to remember. Or filtering and mapping. Yeah, 
this file I'm not doing much of. Mm, oh, here we are. Uh, so, wait, how does that work? So, filter map is the same as cl oh okay let's try that um, board dot pieces collect oh okay case piece color bishop um oh i see this for Okay, so we only want to collect for uh, the bishops, and the thing we're interested in collecting is the color. All right. Um, um, So what have we got now? Oh, piece. Uh, have I not imported? No, piece is a member. It's in the package of chess. OK, yeah, welcome back. Um, case piece color. Bishop does a single scan. Seems like a useful thing. Um, Let's see. Wait. I'm missing something here. Okay, so what's my error? My error is that um, position comma piece. So let's see. Matching syntax is like, or the pattern syntax is case and then the expression type. So what I'm trying to do, um, for this, um, for either kind of where all I want is the color of that. But this is not, this can't possibly be valid. <laughs> um, I'm on the kind of sort of right track here. I mean, this must be like POS of that. Although, how do I alias that on the right side? Um, perhaps I just give this any name over here. And something like that over there, maybe. Uh, let's see. I mean, yeah, I did start on the bottom half of the file before I tried to fix this. Oh, I don't think I need to call this piece bishop. I think I could just call it bishop. I'm not sure. Any kind of piece which happens to be a... Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> squirm <laughs> let's try that this is exciting we're learning scala oh my goodness uh this is the trial by fire man <laughs> it's exciting all right so map is not a member of boolean whatever um <laughs> Okay, P-O-S, oh, peace, any bishop, all right. Okay, that's what we were looking for. <laughs> all right, well, that was interesting. Uh, yeah, and then we're back to the compiler I hit earlier. When I sidetracked myself, um, 
having gotten a bit too excited reading uh, the wonderful review comments. I'm like, hey, that sounds really cool. I want to figure it out. I should try to tackle things one at a time, but um, doing that while streaming is kind of exciting, too. <laughs> yeah, P was good, too. Yeah, the name doesn't have to matter. POS is a, probably a bit more descriptive, especially because I'm using P everywhere else, so I like POS. Um, all right, so here. <sighs> Map is not a member of Boolean. Wait. Oh. Yeah, no, I did something terrifically stupid here. Um, so that and all this other fun stuff I'm going to throw in here. Uh, which is going to be what? Four dot pieces of color map that like that um, oh type mismatch list of boolean really um i mean i could wrap the whole damn thing in one big parenthesis that probably is not the right way to format this stuff but okay yeah absolutely yeah, that's a tremendous savings that and getting the tmux going in the first place so i can actually see this all in one spot uh it's very exciting new development <laughs> um the best I can get for this streaming situation without like breaking out an IDE or uh, committing to some better uh, VI and or uh, crud, uh, Emacs yeah so yeah no certainly if I were to commit to some of that stuff that, that'd be even better for this if I do a lot of coding um but most of this is me floundering, just trying to figure out what the rules need to be. Um, so that actually tested successfully uh, on the one class that, that we had the test only thing there for. Or I'm sorry, the one test we have the test only invoking. Um, so I'm not sure if I'm done with this or if I want to try to fix it. Oh, I'm sorry, I should reread. Um, the code review here. So we got the collect optimization in. That was pretty exciting. Um, so, um, yeah, I think the name of this function is actually correct, by the way. Um, this doesn't really consider whether or not uh, the bishops are of multiple colors. This is actually everything about what's the square color. Uh, as you point out here, this position the square color um, so we're collecting are the bishops in this position not on the same square color um, uh, feels very confusing but um, I think I got that uh, correct the name this name is correct my other names are awful but this name I think is okay um, yeah, and these other places where we have all these this only and that only, those are lies. Uh, so I should fix this up. So kings and bishops only, kings and minors only. I should have just done a global find and replace. Whatever. I'm halfway done with this change here already in this file. Um, let's see. Did I lie anywhere else? Now, I'm not happy with this name. Um, but 
No, this is consistent with our this of and that of naming convention. So kings and minors only of color. Um, that seems okay if awkward. Uh, roles of opponent color I'm even less comfortable with, but um, what else am I going to call that? Yeah, yeah, that's what I should have done. Scaliform, let's have that kick in. Okay, redo that test. So there's no lies in this file. I'm lying in other files, but at least here I'm okay. Um, yeah, so let's see. Get diff master uh, source main. I'm sorry, get. I forget if I can diff dash L. No. That doesn't indicate what files I've changed. Oh. I feel terrifically stupid. There is a way to indicate which files have changed, I think. I've forgotten how to do it. Um, uh, but there aren't so many files in here. Um, so I could say grep.scala, and this will tell me the file names. There's a better way, I think, but this works. Uh, apt install tig. Okay, I'm going to contact my administrator here. Um, let's see, let's just fire that up over here. No need to have like three shells open. Um, all right, install TIG. Let's do that. And then we can do mantig. Um, text mode interface forget. Okay, that's cool. Oh, okay, just take it. Whoa, that's cool. Nice. All right, so that shows, and I could drill down on some of these. And, okay, that's nice. Gosh, that makes everything I've done to date look super awkward. I've been so stubborn. Um, well, that and other things, but, um, but yeah, this is cool. Uh, let's see, I could drill down into there, and there's the change, and presumably a Q or colon Q or control C or something will get me out of that. So, um, yeah, and this shows everything that GitHub was showing me, but locally. Yep, so I can, uh, let's see. Oh, the up and down arrow. Uh, let's see, there's a page up, page down. Yeah, page up and page down, which are underneath my microphone here, but that's okay. <laughs> um, yeah. So it's all the same things. Um, so there we can see these are the files I've changed and under this commit, and I can queue to quit that. Um, oh wow, I can actually make the commit from here? Dang. I don't know that I'm quite ready to do that because um, I had changes in other files, not just the insufficient material here. But I also had, uh, well, that's curious. No, I definitely made some changes um, to the atomic and the horde uh, rule files as well. Um, all right, how many times did I lie in here? Um, bishops only is going to be kings and bishops only uh, minors only is going to be kings and minors only let's see um, did, k 
Okay. Oh, did I not do that, like, globally? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, that might just be a typo I'm reading there, but okay, cool. Uh, so... Yeah, this is nice. Um, I'm not sure how to broach the topic, but, like, say I wanted to augment the board class. Uh, right now, the board class doesn't have a thing, like, does a piece of a certain type exist? Would that... In a Java orientation thing, you'd want to encapsulate... Uh, the board class. Uh, um, instead of having other things access pieces directly or access that map directly, you'd have like. I mean, here we got like king position, and here we've got count. Um, but we don't have like, instead of a count, we don't have a piece exists sort of filter. Where the heck did count go? Yeah, down here. I was actually surprised to see count. Um, I guess there's some cases where we really need that. Um, cause count seems less efficient than uh, a predicate-based filter in the case where you're just trying to check, do I have one or more of these? Um, so I was wondering, like, I don't know, would uh, adding some sort of check for do I have a piece of a given type uh, would that be a reasonable thing to add, or is this already quite large and just don't bother with it? Because um, the thing I was considering adding was, uh, was it Rook Exists? Well, I'm sorry, I'm doing this for Atomic Chess. There's no need for me to go do something like that. Um, if the only consumer is just going to be this class. But if there are multiple consumers, I'd potentially consider just having a function for checking if a piece type exists. Um, instead of having uh, this class have to know that I've got a map and the map element um, has a function called is, or relates to a function called is for a type of rook. Um, There's probably some better OOP abstraction, or I'm sorry, I keep getting stuck in this OOP mentality. I need to try to break out of it, but um, I'm not being particularly articulate either. Um, but yeah, no need for me to go introduce a new function just for this. Um, So, like, here I'm counting, do I have at least two pieces per player? Um, I couldn't figure out a more efficient way to do that. And hopefully Scala's smart enough to recognize that um, all I care about is do I have more than two, or more than one. Um, it's funny, in uh, C++ code, Stockfish, I think, has a function called more than one. Or might be confusing that with some other C++ code I've read, but um, in any event, uh, this functional programming should allow Scala to do something more intelligent, um, uh, depending how things are implemented inside Scala. But being able to count and check whether the count is above a threshold seems like a fairly common thing, so they probably optimized it somehow. Ah! Yeah, that's code golf. That's definitely true. Um, there's no harm in doing it. And it actually, I was curious about the way to do it. <laughs> um, but yeah. Uh, oh, I see. Wow. Yeah, actually, that's not quite as readable. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I've done way too much code golf in my day, I guess. Um, 
Yeah. So I could do colors that all that map and all that. And then that way if we introduce a third color, we're gonna be set. But yeah, uh this is probably okay as it stands. But yeah, I'm with you then. Uh <laughs> yeah. Um let's see. Did I lie anywhere else here? Okay, so I fixed all the lies in this file, and then the other one I touched was hoard. Uh, but here, uh, the only change I made was to this function, or this consumer down here, where we've already checked our, oh my goodness, are all my roles distinct bishop? So are all my remaining pieces bishops? And, um, the bishops are not on opposite square colors. I just took the old function name that was there and swapped in the new function name, which is, this used to say like bishops on different colors. Well, on a chessboard, there's only two square colors. Um, and uh, generally that's always referred to as bishops of opposite color. Um, although it really has not to do with the color of the bishops but the colors of the squares on which they stand. So, all right, so I don't think there's any lies outright in my code right now. Um, oh, I'm sorry, no, we're talking about TIG. Um, so yeah, let's check it out. All right, press enter to jump to line diff, line one of 128. 128, you say. Um, uh, file diff, oh, I'm sorry, uh, press enter to jump to the diff of the file. Okay, and then this, uh, allows me to walk through the diff. Uh, no, actually, yeah, it's page up and page down to walk through the diff, but I'm more than familiar with what I just coded just a second ago, and it passes the, the test only test. However, I've not put it through the full test just yet, so I should hang on one second here. Um, so let me switch back. All right, um, crud, how do I switch? Can I just like tilde test? Oh, press enter to interrupt. Okay, we've interrupted. Let's switch into full test mode, like testing everything, and then put focus back in my console here. Apparently, um, yeah, I'll just let that run. I don't know. How did I do this, I wonder? Okay, so control O. No, it's control B O. That takes me there. Okay, so if I'm holding down the control key, then it swaps the panes like this. But if I just do the O key by itself, then that's fine. I don't know if by doing control O if I've done something to stall this, but I don't think so. All right, so let me expand this now that I understand what the heck I'm doing. Um, well, that's cool. Uh, I'm in log mode at the moment. So this would just be a way to view the changes that I made which I just made a second ago. Um, um, oh, I'm sorry, press S. That's what the SU said before it was about. Okay. All right, on branch. Um, yeah, I passed 689 tests. That's perfect. All right. Change is not staged. Um, d d d press U to stage. All right, sure, let's stage it. Um, now, I, I mean, I could leave out starting position that here. Um, don't have to stage that. Uh, there's just an extra space in the file, which is probably fine since now we're both in, um, there's nothing, no surprises there. Um, so Scalaform took care of that. I'll, might as well check that in or commit that with the rest of this commit. All right. 
So, and then there's insufficient mating material. This thing, which, um, oh, I'm sorry. I'm not sure if I'm completely done though. Um, the one thing I wanted to think about is have I done something terrifically stupid in terms of performance of my change? Having gotten this correct, uh, is there something more that I want to do in terms of um, I don't know. So we're checking has the let me add a Java doc up here first of all so I don't permanently confuse myself. Um, um, determines whether a player uh, has <laughs> does not have mating material because this class is insufficient mating material uh, determines whether a color all right and then we'll add a comment below here saying um, I mean, I could add more comments inside the body of the method to explain what the heck is doing. Um, a knight mates a uh, king plus knight uh, mates against um, King plus either uh, what's it? Uh, King plus any of uh, rook, bishop, knight. Uh, this really has everything to do with how the code's implemented below it, but bishop. Um, mates against king plus any of uh, bishop or knight or pawn. Um, yeah, this has everything to do with the body of the method, but. In general, um, And yeah, there's further details about um, uh, King plus Bishop versus King plus Bishop depends upon Bishop square colors. Depends on bishop square colors. Even if it's in the line 80 mark. Oh, well, oh, I've gone into it. All right. All right, cool. So that'll get done when it gets done. Uh, to view my changes, S to stage a file, U to stage it, C to create the commit. H, oh, H to view all the keyboard shortcuts. Perfect. Uh. All right. 
So I can quit out of this, wait for those tests to complete. Uh, S, and then I'm actually interested in staging all these. Um, gonna wait for that test to complete all 680 something tests um, before I actually start committing because I don't want to have to um, amend my commit um, not in my first experience through this oh changes to be committed sorry everything was staged I unstaged it and I've restaged it so that's good just wait for the test to complete I'm sorry, I just added javadoc. That's not going to affect the performance of this. Um, yeah, and the fact that I just... Yeah, what I added should have negligible performance detriment as far as I can see. Of course, you could test this. Um, um, probably should. Um beyond just testing for accuracy, but I added on a filter that said only do any of this matching stuff if the remaining pieces of my color are the king and the minor pieces. Um, I'm not creating a list in between anymore, so this shouldn't, shouldn't significantly slow down and things running through the We'll take a look at it, but I do want to start the commit here. I'm quite happy with how far I've gotten with this. Um, capital C to, oh, I'm sorry, H to view keyboard shortcuts. Yeah. So C shows a stage view. Uh, I think it was capital C to commit. Um, well, that's kind of cool. I admit I'm exhausted at this point, but... Um, all right, let's step out of that. Um, fix um, mating material check for queen versus same the bishops on same color. Uh, yeah. Cause I think that's pretty good. Oops, press enter to continue. <laughs> oh, no, that's a good point. Yeah, I want to go do that. Uh, Although the nano editor is not terrible, but um, yeah, why don't I do that? It's kind of amazing I'm using all these editors. Uh, I've not yet used um, not yet used Emacs. Although I tried it once with tried to get evil mode set up, but never quite got there. Um, there we go. Uh, what more do I want to do? So I wanted to take one more look at this and see if I've done anything terrifically stupid that I'm going to need one more commit to get fixed. But I don't think I'm doing anything... I don't think I'm adding any new data structures in what I'm doing. Yes, there's additional logic. Um... But I've not introduced any new memory allocation of new lists and such that weren't already here. This is the list that we already had. Um, and the rest of this, like bishops on opposite colors, um, yeah. Um, this was always doing something far more inefficient than what it's currently doing. 
Um, yeah. So, I think that I haven't done anything terrifically stupid, so I think that's fortunate. Uh, you did mention in the one case where I was doing the filter and then the map, and I've changed that to the collect syntax. So it's only a single pass instead of a dual pass through there. Um, so I think this standard chest is fine. There's probably some better way to write some of this code, so it doesn't have so much code. Um, bishops on opposite color, yes. This has everything to do with the colors of the squares on which the bishops stand, irrespective of what color the bishops are. Um, so yeah, this is actually named correctly. Uh, so yeah, here we use it for standard chests for checking. <laughs> it's a bit of uh, an interesting rule here. So if we're checking, uh, uh, say I'm playing white, my clock just timed out, we're checking does black, color black, have um, a bishop remaining. If black has a bishop remaining, then uh, white having only a knight or a pawn could get mated, or um, white could get mated if there are bishops on opposite color squares and black has at least one bishop. So the bishops that is on the other color square could be a white bishop or could be a black bishop. Doesn't matter. In either case, that counts as a win for the player that has, uh, that didn't time out because the opponent has a bishop. Yes! That is crazy. Yeah, so that's how this works. Um, uh, that took me forever to get, but now I'm explaining at least the method names are accurate. And the tests stand there as well. So this is the efficient way to check for that sort of thing. Um, And then the atomic chess rule set further builds upon this. Uh, so I restructured this stuff as well. Um, so uh, previously I used to check for that opposite color bishop thing in advance. Um, so now what this is checking is, do both players have more than a king? And if both players have more than a king, and if this used to always return false, but no, there is actually a condition where, um, let's see. Um, so it's insufficient material in atomic chess. It's insufficient if um, if only kings and bishops remain and there's not at least five pieces um, let me get this set up Let's say this is atomic chess um, so simplest case is this uh, so this counts as a checkmate. Um, similarly, if these were white bishops right next to the king, uh, then it would be possible for, um, for black to win it. Okay, similarly, if there are bishops on opposite color squares, black can win that. Um, so if the bishops are on the same color square. Uh, I think those are the three possibilities where... Um, uh, oh, but also one of the players is capable of winning this. Uh, 
But we've already established, yeah, if both players have a bishop on the same color, um, then a explosion could happen to finish the game. Otherwise, this sort of mate, or how do I get this to happen to black? I think there's some way. I could be wrong. But at least one of the players is capable of checkmating the other if the bishops are in opposite square colors. Um, this last condition here might be unnecessary. So yeah, this is checking, can either player, can one of the players win this game or should it go on? Um, this atomic chess stuff is confusing. So there's insufficient material. Um, yes, yeah, so if there are at least five pieces, then one of the players is capable of winning. However, if there are only four pieces and the bishops are on the same color square, I'm sorry, not on the same color square, then that brings us into this category where neither player can win. But if they're on the same color, then either player could win. Or if there are at least five pieces, irrespective of where the fifth bishop is placed or what color it is, um, one of the players can win that. So it makes sense to play out the game. Um, so that's the case where both players have at least uh, two pieces. If one player has just a lone king, however, um, then we fall into here and check. Um, it could be insufficient material if all that remains are kings and... Oh! Uh, in atomic chess, I consider a rook to be a minor, but that's not accurate. Um, Oops, I'm viewing the file as opposed to viming it. It really depends what your definition of minor is with respect to atomic. Um, but conventionally, that might confuse people. Yes, there are tests for this stuff. It's nuts. Um, I, let me verify just how many tests there are, but it wouldn't hurt for me to add a little bit more regardless of how much we got covered already kings and rooks and minors only basically yeah whatever um and that'll at least help i'm sorry let's kings rooks and minors only uh that'll be more than sufficient to differentiate it from kings and bishops only um, let that compile and run I just changed the name of the variable again I should have done the find to replace but I wasn't thinking um, but okay if all that remains are kings and rooks and minors we've already looked at all the bishop stuff um, but if there are bishops uh, there are not bishops on opposite colors this could be insufficient um, so here we've established that there is a lone king on at least one of the sides that one of the players does not have at least two pieces so if it's all bishops um, you need to have bishops either on both color squares or you need something in addition to the bishops let me close this other thing um, um, so if you don't have a bishop pair that are opposite square colors, then you need to check, do I have a rook? Uh, and if I don't have a rook, then it's insufficient material unless I have at least five pieces. Um, so here I have five pieces. Here, this four would not be enough to mate. Here, this is enough. And the reason it's enough is that you can just stick the knight right next to the king and there's the mate or you could make that a bishop and that counts or whatever uh, but yeah if there's a rook then you don't need to have um, five pieces then four will suffice but otherwise you need uh, pieces that can cover uh, the other squares unless you have a bishop pair the bishop pair can cover all that but 
this mates to. Um, and what else mates is, uh, what was it? Yeah, so three knights mates, it, there's just a lot of possibilities, but it all boils down to this, and this is like super efficient. So yeah, it's important to have the tests, and I think there are lots of atomic variant tests. I think they cover this, but you know, probably wouldn't hurt for me to just verify that. So let's verify it, right? Oops. Uh, let's see. All right, let's quit. Uh, I'm sorry, this should be kings. Yeah, let's quit out of that. Um, and source test, Scala, atomic variant test. Oh, so, okay, there's the basic rules of the game. I'm sorry, the insufficient material, t okay, I'm sorry, here it is. Don't draw if there are three bishops of both square colors. Um, don't draw on bishops versus bishops where an explosion could occur that would take out the king. Uh, no automatic draw in a closed position with kings and pawns, uh, which cannot move. Or, I'm sorry, there should be an automatic draw if only kings and pawns remain and none of the pawns can move. And the player is not in check, which that does verify. Um, identify the player is not of sufficient material to win if they have only a king. Uh, escaping a check that would explode both kings. What more is there? Um, no repeated moves in the list of available moves of the situation. Um, yeah, I should probably add a few more. Um, just uh, last time I was through here, maybe some of this got put into the other test file. I'm not sure. Um, I should take a look. So we got, oh, bishop and king versus king, rook and king versus king, king versus king, um, knight and king versus king, um, and then just validating the rules of the game. So I don't even know, like, we'd never get a position where a player has three knights, but I could add a test for it anyway. Nobody's going to be that... Ri Somebody's going to be that ridiculous. Somebody's going to do it. And whatever. Um, so... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Unless I verified that my rules make sense there. Um, all right, we'll add some more tests. So not draw inappropriately on bishops... On three bishops that are on both square colors. So what's this test? What does that look like? Oh yeah, and here I played e1 bishop. So that's pretty obvious. Um, So now I should put a white bishop on e1 um, instead of that. So where do we go here? So that's 460. Oh, dang it. I need to edit my vimrc and stick this in there. Uh, I still need this visual highlight here. So that's 461 through 449. Three bishops of both square colors. Um, so instead of the move being e1 bishop, well, I'm sorry, I just put uh, two white bishops where the black bishops are. Um, let's see, so here we got, OK, 
Okay, that's going to be a white bishop now. This is going to be a white bishop. E1 bishop should not change um, the outcome. Oh, I should get the name of this test file since I'm only changing the test file. So this is chess.atomicVariantTest. This is the only thing I need to be um, Okay, I can't interrupt it. Uh, test only chess.atomic variant test. We'll have that eventually start up. Um, okay, switch back. What more do I want to add to this? Um, so. So we had this with the those bishops. Here now we got those bishops. Um, I guess I could add this. That's different. Why not? All right. So I can grab this. It's uh, another. Whoa, whoa! What happened here? Didn't I yank thirteen lines of code? Yank 13, paste. All right, and then this time, this bishop's not going to be... What did I, where did I move that? Oh, I moved the one on the bottom rank. So instead of five spaces and then a bishop and then two empty spaces, that's going to be 6b1. Um, all right. Oh. Is this... Oh, come on. Okay. Oh, wait. That's not what I wanted to test. Okay. Apparently, I confused myself. Um, so this is called chess.atomic variant test. called chess.atomic variant test. Um, uh, all right, so now we're back into waiting for source changes. Um, well, I guess at least at, um, yeah, all my tests are listed there, right? Yeah, so all three of my, uh, those tests are all there. Um, so it is picking up the latest test definition. That's fortunate. Oh, SBT has autocomplete. That is nice. Or has autocompletion. Um, okay, what more do I want to do here? I've covered all the ways in which I can have these bishops aligned. Um, I guess I could add in the ones that have the knights instead of the bishops and in addition to the bishops and all this fun stuff. Um, why don't I do that? Yank 13. Uh, not draw inappropriately on two bishops. Uh, and a knight. All right, so we're going to change the piece on the back rank here to be a knight. All right, and then uh, grab that and then change this up. So instead of the piece on the back rank being the knight, we're going to have that be a bishop. And then the one in the second rank is going to be a knight. Oh, good. It does pick up that, even though it's not as... It's a test source change. There we go. That passed. All right. So we have the one with the knight here, the one with the knight down there. Now, what if they're both knights? OK. Um, not 
draw inappropriately on uh, two knights and a bishop. Um, I'm trying to think of what if they under promoted to a knight there. Yeah, that would like that would also count as something to not auto draw. All right, not draw inappropriately on three knights. Um, uh, two colors. So here, instead of promoting to a bishop, we promote to a knight. Um, and then we're going to have another one with knights of both colors. Uh, which of these? Either of those two could be a black knight. Um, Same color. So now if they're all black knights, that'll do it. I think that's every combination of bishops and of knights. Um, might have missed something. I don't know. But we have like pretty awesome test coverage. Um, I feel kind of bad having all, this seems like super bulky for a test, but I don't know, this is all being done up in the cloud anyway. If it takes a few more CPU site, well, this, this went through that very quickly. That actually proves the point that this is efficient, so it's not like some of the things we're, we're doing high pressure testing or something of that. This is actually very efficient, so fact that I'm adding so many yeah the CPU for the tests here is not relevant it would take some much much larger test for that to be a consideration um, to the point where if the tests were actually being held up that's when I'd start to worry about it um, but yeah this should uh, have no problem um, so yeah, I think that's far better than it was. Yeah, as long as uh, as a dev, I get the feedback quickly, and as long as the feedback's not completely overwhelming, and it's not. Uh, SBT is quite good about formatting its feedback. Um, yeah, that's good. Nice. I mean, yeah, arguably I could take some of these test cases and try to bundle them together or something clever, but not doing that because that makes the tests much harder to read and to debug. These are nice independent tests. There's probably some more clever way to do it, but we're not going there. Um, all right, clear. Uh, sure. So there's... I forget what I was doing here. A oh, renaming this. I could micro-commit this. I should micro-commit it. Why not? I mean, nobody's going to look at the names of this and see, like, the reason I changed this was to fix a lie, but, um, I don't know. Some people have strong opinions about micro-commits. At work, they hate it when I do that, which is just nuts, but, um, yeah. Let's see. So let's start the commit. Uh, oh, you actually prefer micro commits, so let's do that. All right. 
aborting due to empty commit message. All right. Um, uh, yeah. Oh. Okay. That's cool. Did not know that was possible. Thankfully, this is all the things I want to commit are in independent files, but um, that's a good point. Um, stockfish people don't like micro commits very much either. <laughs> or at least they prefer that you um, collapse all your changes before submitting the pull request. But yeah, I think. Uh, re Oops. Rename. Uh, uh, do, do, do. Variable. Um, used for uh, kings and rooks. Uh, sufficient. Uh, rename mating material the variable expression i don't even know what you call a variable in this language but yeah yes the ability to revert things atomically is very useful uh, misnamed variable King, uh, and in fact, it's not just any variable uh, predicate. It's the, the sort of thing that that is. It's the, it's the class of the object, which I had misnamed. Uh, all right, and then let's stage this. You to stage it. C to commit it. Uh, augment. Um, atomic minor. I'm sorry. Augment mating material. Atomic. Uh, atomic has to do with the variant name. Atomic variant uh, mating material minor pieces tests oh uh, okay and this highlights to me what github doesn't like where i've gone over like some number of characters um interesting i don't need the word variant um Uh, minor pieces in parentheses probably doesn't need to be with parentheses, and that probably just confuses things. Um, yeah, so that looks fine. Yeah, I've noticed on GitHub though, like some of my 80 com character commit messages don't get relayed properly through the web interface. Okay, the coloring is weird. All right, so yeah, why not? Let's let's do that. Um, uh, I mean, we're touching the file atomic variant test. It's pretty clear that what I could be touching here, um, although looking at the commit message from a list of commit messages. All you get here is that this has something to do with um, atomic, but yeah. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah, it could always spill onto a second line if I wanted to, or more lines than one. This coloring's just weird. I think this more than captures the essence of what I'm doing, though. So this seems to be explained enough. Um, Oops. Oh, right. I was going to 
I'll just do the git log to see what I changed. Um, just to make sure that it actually took, but I remember TIG shows me that directly. So that's nice. All right. Um, I don't suppose this pushes too, does it? I think I've seen people push before with this interface. Uh, mm -hmm. Toggle, title overflow, close the view, find, talk. Oh, you can actually do colon uh, stuff with option toggling. I'm oh, sorry, so there's all these characters here which um, seem to do the same thing as trying to run a command here directly. Uh, which to me suggests that like if I just hit colon I should be able to invoke a command. Um, although I'm curious why... Um, oh, external commands. So the question mark git invokes uh, an external command on git itself. Oh, that's cool. So we got uh, commit, revert, merge, all that goodness. Um, hmm. Interesting. Yes, yeah, so if I wanted to push, I could just do question mark git push. Um, it seems kind of weird though. Up. Yeah, you could add your own uh, aliases. That's nice. Uh, git push uh, queen Okay. Yeah. So this does have some autocomplete capability, but um, it's not exactly what I was looking for. Um, let's see, how do we set that up? TIG shortcut. Uh, push. Sorry for the sudden transition from a light screen to a or a dark screen to a light screen. Uh, I'm having difficulty reading it myself. Just why I shouldn't leave the thing on dark mode all the time, but um, yeah, I'll figure it out somehow. But um, that's okay. That's more than sufficient. So we'll just do that. Right, cool. Nice success of a sort. Yeah. Um, well, thanks very much for the assistance with this. Um, it's good learning stuff. Uh, even if I'm not using it day to day, probably someday I'll need it. So. It's not bad to know it. Yeah. Also, it's a fun little journey getting there. Um, so, once more for the road, this is what got changed. Yeah, a lot of things got changed. Several tests got added. Oh man, figuring out these rules was a bit of an adventure. Ah, nice. <laughs> yeah, I especially like um, just how we're making very good use of, use of tests and fixtures and such. Um, it's quite thorough, and it definitely is paying off. Um, So that was cool. Um, 
is there anything else to report at this time? I know, uh, was it this morning? Uh, I had like YouTube or something open in my browser. And so my browser was lagging for other reasons and was consuming like two gigabytes of memory. And at the same time, I observed some strange display issue with pieces on my Lee chess board where like a captured piece in atomic chess had not gone away or something like that. So there might be some issue where memory pressure somehow affects performance of um, certain Lee chess tabs. Not even Lee chess's fault. It could be completely my browser's fault, but just one thing to think about that generally when I've been doing my testing or trying to reproduce whatever things uh, users have been talking about, I haven't thought about that. And I guess going forward, I'll try to resolve to think about that more. Um, even though it's not something users should, like, certainly Lee Chess performs very well. So it's not like Lee Chess is causing browsers to do strange things, but browsers do strange things anyway. Um, so it's just something I'll try to think a little bit more about. And maybe if I come up with a reproducible use case, we'll think even more about it. But, but uh, slow incremental changes are good. Um, um, yeah, and I know Stockfish, uh, the official Stockfish team, seems quite excited about their upcoming competition uh, with Leela. Um, uh, it's the TCEC something cup, I forget. Um, but yeah, they're pushing all, or they're creating all sorts of pull requests, and it's quite exciting what they're doing. And I haven't even looked at their uh, Google, uh, what do they call it? They have a Google group or something where they discuss all these stockfish issues. And sometimes I've put feedback into there and not really gotten much in the way of a response. So these days I mostly communicate with them through either talk chess or GitHub or whatever. Um, but um, yeah, they seem to be doing a lot of strange things, so I'm just keeping on top of that as well. Um, so yeah, um, there's one other thing that I do intend to get around to at some point, and why don't I show that if I can here? I've had this queued up for the longest freaking time, and I never get to it, and probably never will, even though I keep saying I will, but um yeah let's put that on screen the advent of code so there's now four years of advent that i intend to get through at some point um and not so much to try to like make the leaderboard or anything but you know i've used this and programming puzzles of sorts as tools for trying to learn languages that i'm not familiar with because it's a fun, exciting little hobby, so probably with one of these I'll try out Ruby again. Another one I'll probably do like, um, oh, I had the name of the language in mind. Wow, I can't believe I blanked on it that quickly. That's awful. Um, oh, Rust. Yeah. It could be fun to do the Evan to code in Rust and just get a better handle of that and see what that has to offer. Um, I think I finally got a handle on Scala, so if I wanted to, I could do one of these uh, years of it in Scala, even if I'm not using the more advanced Scala features like traits and other stuff like that. But I know enough to at least be dangerous with Scala at this point, so that's good. Um, yeah, and sometime I'll try taking another look at uh, Phoenix Framework. Even though that's a web architecture and wouldn't be used for this, um, uh, if I understand Elixir um, and enough, I might be able to make some progress with that. I'm sure if Mike were around here, he'd probably recommend that I take another look at Haskell. So, yeah, this is a pretty awesome Christmas tree. Um, yeah, so doing something like that in Haskell could be exciting. <laughs> Why not, right? <laughs> uh, 
I know he was most amused by my comment about um, what Haskell's good for. I always say that like just tongue in cheek, like uh, yeah, now Haskell's a great language, and many other languages have stolen ideas from it. So yeah, look forward to the advent of code at some point. Um, I think I've been announcing the for like three years that I'm gonna do it and I've never found both the time and interest and energy and all that to just get it and make a good production of it so and it's not gonna take that long either cuz like I do development all the time how hard can it be to like do the Christmas tree stuff I don't know or whatever kind of tree that is be it whatever the religions you observe and such doesn't have to be a Christmas tree. It could be, oh, I don't know. But either way, um, yeah, that was a good session we had today. Uh, it was very fun. Uh, thanks to Debo for all the help. Um, and I guess I'll see you all next time. Have a good night.